So welcome everybody to another 30 minute high impact webinar here hosted by Nexus for Change. My name is Theo Stiegler. I will be your conductor today uh, as we are uh, sharing a conversation uh, about how to leverage Simon Sinek's golden circle and his starting with why framework for your change practice. So the question that uh, comes up a lot is, uh, situations where we find ourselves overwhelmed with the details of agenda design and facilitated activities and technology tech hurdles and logistics challenges and sort of the how and the what of the things that we are are doing and that we're engaged in and um, Simon Sinek suggests that we need to focus instead and leverage the why and use the grounding that is in this idea of the golden circle and the why to align our focus and um, align our focus um, in our change agreements. The, uh, I don't know if most of you hopefully are familiar with uh, his TED talk that he gave uh, several years ago. It was actually the most viewed tech TED talk of all time for a minute. Um, putting some links for you in the chat also to his book, Start With Why, and uh, an interesting list of sort of the most popular TED talks that I came up with um, looking at his stuff that I stumbled across. I'm sharing that in the chat as well. Um, so regardless of uh, the suggestion that the what and how is maybe not the ideal place to start, I'm going to ask you this morning, I'll give you about two minutes. Uh, I would love for you to all share what it is that you're doing, but do that without stating your job title or your position. So in the chat, if you could share what it is that you do. And secondly, maybe even number it one and two, how do you do it? What's maybe one tool or one practice that is sort of core to how you do what you do? And so if you would go ahead and um, give you about two minutes, don't overthink it, just what comes to mind. What is it that you do, but don't just give your job title or your position. A and B, how do you do it? Maybe about two minutes. I'll share with you as an example, I, and obviously I have sort of a leg up. I've thought about this for a little bit, but what is it that I do? What I do is I create shared environments for synergy. And how do I do it is I look to leverage and create virtual tools to connect people. So what might your answers be? Excellent. All right, I love those. Um, so the what seems to be a lot of times what we start with. Uh, typically when you're in a situation where, where people are making small talk, a lot of times that's, you know, other than, hey, what's the weather, where you're at, or those kinds of things, that's typically what we ask, right? Is so what do you do? And I think a lot of times we tend to respond with some sort of job title. Um, I think the answers that you guys gave here in the chat um, are wonderful in terms of, you know, I certainly see a connection with a lot of um, collaboration being at focus and things like that. But I wonder if those are the things that we would say um, if somebody asks us what we're doing. Um, I think a lot of times it, it's challenging or was challenging for me when I started thinking about this. This activity is one that I was introduced to um, at one of our Great Lakes Exchange gatherings to, to talk about what it is I do without my job title. It was sort of a challenge at first to think about what that might be. So I think that's helpful to think of it, um, describing it that way. So the second piece, how do you do it? Um, you guys talked about facilitation, holding space, um, I think, again, those are, those are great answers that if we think about the how, it's not typical that people have an easy answer answering that question. I think a lot of times, how do you do it is challenged by, in my experience, two, one of two things. The typical how challenges that we run into are kinds of specialization, where sometimes I have even found myself slightly cocky at hey, you know, I don't know that I could even explain that to you because it's, it's complicated. There is this proprietary knowledge or these proprietary tools that you won't really understand. So I can't explain to you how I do this or how we do this. Um, and on the flip side of that, sometimes I think I've been in organizations where if you ask the question, how do we do that? And somebody describes a certain process or procedure, and then you say, well, why do we do it that way? The answer is, well, we've always done it that way. Uh, or, well, there's the software tool that we use for timekeeping, for example, and so that requires us to have this kind of system in place. 
So a lot of times then you have a situation where people might know how, they might know the process or the practice, but they don't know the why, which is the perfect segue for us to get to why. Why are we doing it? Um, Cynic suggests in his book, Start With Why, and in, in the talks that I shared with you, and that many of you probably have seen that successful leaders, what sets them apart, successful leaders and successful organizations is that they have a clarity about what their why is and that they start with that. They don't start with here's what we do and how we do it and sort of go from the outside in. They go from the inside out and start with why. They start with purpose. Um, so I don't, I don't want to put you all on the spot in the chat, but if, what is your why? Is that something that you have an already, already answer for? Um, I find that that's something that we have continued to wrestle with here at Nexus. I think our why is something on the along the lines of we, we believe that when people have the right tools to collaborate and connect, we are better together. And so really everything that we do needs to somewhere and somehow connect back to that why. If it doesn't, we probably need to check and say, why are we doing that? That doesn't connect to our purpose. One of the reasons that I'm really fascinated with why is growing up as a minister's son in East Germany, it was one of the questions that I could not afford to ask. Um, I'll give you a little story. The, uh, the middle school that I attended was organized in such a way that you would go from classroom to classroom. And so for geography, you would go to the geography classroom. For uh, history, you'd go to the history room. And so this is about 1987 in East Germany. Um, at the back of the history room were panels against the wall that looked something like what you see here on the slide. On the very left were the hunter and gatherers, and then it went to an agricultural society. The last two of those panels were capitalism and socialism. And for some reason, I decided to ask the history teacher, why is the capitalism and socialism panel, why are they organized to make it appear that chronologically socialism is you know the next iteration of capitalism when they when they exist at the same time and i didn't get a response but from the face of the teacher i could i knew i had screwed up right then and there and so i piped down and oh man that was probably not a good question to ask it turns out that history teacher was an informant to the stasi officer who had my dad on his caseload so when we found that all after the wall came down it was sort of like whew, probably not not so great so why is it that we lose the curiosity and the focus on why that seems to be so much at the core of our experience when we're learning as, as children? Um, it appears that part of that is sort of our adult focus on the what. Um, Cynic talks about in, in his book about how the what sort of corresponds with our neocortal activity. And our neocortex is responsible for, you know, sort of the rational analytic thought and language. And it allows us to dig through facts and figures and is supposed to drive our, our rational decision making. Um, turns out though that if you look at our biology, decision making really isn't done exclusively, at least in the neocortex. It's very much a, a thing that happens in other areas of the brain. So Simon Sinek quotes Henry Ford in sort of pointing out the the challenge with focusing on the why henry ford said if i had asked people what they wanted they would have said to build a faster horse um so you really have to start with purpose is sort of the point that we're that we're driving home um our limbic brain is really where decisions are made and our limbic brain is much more connected to things like feeling and trust and loyalty and it's based on what we believe and the things that we believe are aligned with what is our why so if you for example, have a situation where you can bring stakeholders to the table um, and you can use, for example, the RACI plus F tool for that. There's a, a webinar that we've done a couple of weeks ago. If you bring people together and you can get an agreement on purpose on the why, it's not just that you then have created a situation where those folks agree on why they're working on a certain activity or action, but you really are tapping into sort of the core of how we as humans in our interactions build trust and connection and shared belief um, because we tend to want to hang out with folks that believe similar things from what we believe. Um, so that's really all about getting, getting to purpose. Um, in order to get to purpose, um, a really good way to, to sort of double check our 
tendency to be focused on what is to, okay, here's an activity that we're doing. We can ask the question in order to what? So we're doing this activity, we're, we're facilitating the certain process or procedure in order to what? What are the desired outcomes? What are the benefits and results? A lot of times it's easier to start rather than starting with why and trying to come up with like a purpose statement. A lot of times it's easier to sort of take one step back and say, what are the desired outcomes, the shared desired outcomes of why we're gathered here together? What are the benefits that, that we intend to get to? What are the results? And sort of when you list those out, a lot of times, very clearly from that, you can find what the purpose is. And again, the purpose is not an activity or a cynic says an organizational purpose is not to make a profit. It's an outcome. But if you list those outcomes, you can get to purpose. Um, a great way um, that helps with that, Ron Lippitt's three question is another um, webinar that I'm um, sort of shamelessly plugging here. The three questions that he asks for organization design, you can check that out on our blog. Um, and actually, I'll just put that into the chat as well here. But that's one way to, to get a little bit more toward purpose. What I thought was curious when I really started digging into and working on these considerations as to how does Simon Sinek's Golden Circle, the why, what, and how, and going from purpose outward, how does that compare to the things that I already do? And I would like to suggest that in a lot of the frameworks that at least here at Nexus, we use a lot of times, there's parallels to the golden circle. If you look at the PLAN framework, which is a sort of a project management for, format that looks at P, purpose, L, leaders and stakeholders, A, actions, activities and agenda, and, and the needs for that, to me that aligns with purpose is the why. What are the actions, the agenda, the activities? How do we do it are the needs that we have, the budget, the tools, the processes and procedures. Uh, Ron Lippitt's three questions that I just mentioned, those three questions are what's the purpose, who needs to be involved, and what conversations need to be had. To me, those line up with what's the purpose is the why, and what conversations need to be had is the what. If you think of the change formula, uh, DVFS lines out the vision, the first steps and the supports that are necessary to overcome are the resistance. Again, the why to me is the vision and mission of, of something or somebody, what, is it, what it is that they're looking to achieve. The what are those first steps in the change formula, the how are the supports that need to be in place. Finally, if you look at a business model, I think it lines up rather nicely. A business plan outlines the what, the mission and vision, focus on the why, the purpose, and the project management tools that you might engage are the how do you do it. I want to share with you one, one example as to how I have started to think of leveraging and utilizing the uh, golden circle. And one way to do that is in thinking of meeting agendas and meeting planning, utilizing all three pieces and starting with why. So being intentional about what's our why and talking about in a meeting and planning a meeting about what's the purpose of the meeting and making that very explicit at the top and reviewing it with the group. You have the what, those are the agenda items that you can list out. The how, sometimes a little bit more difficult to get our hands around, to me are sort of the, the four T's, the time, talent, treasure, and ties or connections, if you will, that individual people coming to that meeting, coming to that gathering are bringing to the table. And so if you're spelling that out in uh, in an agenda document, it might look something like this. You have at the top a purpose statement. Why are we here? What's the purpose of our meeting? You might list out the attendees. Then the what is your agenda. And the how at the bottom outlines, you know, we might need a Zoom room to have this gathering because we're doing it on a video conferencing platform. You might, in a physical space, need the room and you might want some daylight in it with a nice window and maybe even a tablecloth with some flowers on it to set a tone that's different from this is just another boring business meeting that we're all trying to get out of. So really intentionally thinking about those three elements, I think can be very meaningful. I'll share this um, template example with you in the chat and you're welcome to utilize that. Uh, I think I have a, um, well, I obviously have a, a Word document for that also. If, uh, if you're interested, I'd be happy to share that as well. So those are some of the ways that um, 
I think of and how we at Nexus think of leveraging the golden circle. Are there any questions, reactions that you might have? What is meant by treasure, Bernadette, as the, the budget? What, what's the amount of dollars? Oh. Going, you know, the four T's that we're trying to, I'll hop back to that slide here for a second. So it's, it's just, it's supposed to be a mnemonic device to figure out what are the, the core um, needs that you might have. You have time, people's time, you have talent, right. you have a budget and you have connections. But in order to make them all four T's, it's time, talent, treasure and ties. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Uh, Stephanie has put in the chat here. Oh, no, that, that was your response to um, the how. I do this through win-win negotiating framework and seeking to understand systems and viability for training needs. Could you say a word, Stephanie, to uh, what your win-win negotiating framework is? Sure. Um, really what it is, is it's outlining what the intended return on investment would be. So what would my client Stand to gain from making um, making a decision on whatever it is that we're talking about, and then we outline the specific things and ultimately come to an agreement on the action steps that I would take, as well as the action steps that they would need to take in order for our objective to be successful. Excellent. So, so sort of what I'm hearing from that in this framework would be that the first piece looks at the purpose, like what are the benefits, the outcomes that get us to an answer to why are we doing this? That's and then exactly the second right. piece are the ac action steps. So it's really reflecting what we've talked about. You're focusing on outcomes first and then how to second. That's exactly right. Awesome. I'm, I'm in awe of your synthesis across the tools. Oh, thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions or, or comments or reactions, I want to uh, plug our sponsors real quick, uh, Nexus for Change, but also the Bowling Green State University Doctoral Program of Organization Development and Change. And as we're coming up about a uh, couple minutes to our 30 minutes, there's no other questions or reactions. I will uh, say thank you so much and hope to see you, uh, see you next week. Awesome, you thank you. Then. And if not, there will be, again, we do this weekly and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you all for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good one. Thanks.